So hi everyone, hope you can all hear me well and see me well. I'm Marika Bonnak and I study uh, urban analytics at the University of Glasgow, as you said. Um, and today I'm going to talk to you about uh, the preliminary findings of, on, of an ongoing research project that we are doing, studying fuel poverty and income deprivation. Um, and fuel poverty is usually defined as the inability to afford adequate warmth in a household. And it's most often linked to high energy expenditure, low household income and inefficient building insulation. It's a very important policy question because it affects a large part of the population. It's estimated that in England, 2.5 million people live in fuel poverty. Um, it's a highly studied topic and uh, in the literature often it's understood as an architectural question. So um, it's studied as the building itself and the insulation and the town built up of the, of the building. Um, but also is often understood as only a sociological question that's studying inequality. Um, and um, we were interested to see how these two sides relate. Um, and uh, our research question mostly focuses on whether there is a spatial pattern to fuel poverty, and if so, what neighborhood units um, this is more present than others, and what um, demographic information it affects um, mostly. So we wanted to turn to a new source of urban data to understand this complex phenomenon because obviously it's influenced by many different factors. Um, so these are the data sources that we use. Um, we are using the English indices of multiple deprivation, um, which I assume you also know, um, and that's um, an income. So we use the income uh, deprivation measure uh, that measures how uh, the, the percentage uh, in each uh, local area um, where people experience income deprivation and this is mostly calculated through benefits and um, job seekers allowance, uh, child benefits um, and that's registered on a neighborhood scale. Um, we are using the energy performance certificates, uh, the EPCs, which are registered on, a, on the household scale and it's um, a data set that contains um, a range um, from uh, F, which is the really um, low in insulation and really low energy efficiency to A, which is a really good um, insulation and really good energy performance. Um, it's also represents the number from A from one to hundred plus. But this data set also contains various information on windows and heating systems and all of these. Um, for the um, spatial analysis, we are using the English boundary data um, that provides the shape file for these analysis. And also um, to understand the demographic side of this um, question, we are using the census data um, and information on tenure. So whether it's um, the area has more social rented tenure or owner occupation or origin. So whether uh, in that local area um, there is more UK born population, um, what's the employment percentage. So these are the data that we are using. Um, and since uh, this is a neighborhood analysis, we're aggregating it up to the LSOA level, which is the lower level super output area. Um, and um, so pure poverty is often defined as a percentage that people are spending on energy costs, but obviously because we don't have household level or um, information on, on income, we're using a proxy and this proxy is defined uh, by using all household energy costs from the EPC data set and then the income score from the IMD data set. Of course, we know that not every household who spends above the average or disproportionately more than the average people um, are necessarily fuel poor, but we were interested to see where they are located spatially. So we are using this proxy um, as the independent variable or as it's sorry, as a dependent variable. And then we are using um, five variables as the um, independent. Um, these are the EPC rating, as I said, which goes from one till 100 plus, And that talks about how, or like, says about how um, the, um, the building is insulated and how energy efficient it is. Uh, we are also incorporating ownership and social rented, as I mentioned, origin. So whether someone is a UK origin Born, born in the UK or not, and employment percentage. Um, so for this analysis, we decided to use multi-scale geographically weighted regression, which um, is um, a spatial regression type 
where you where it explores the geographically varying relationship between the dependent and independent variables. Um, and we decided to use this type of spatial regression because MGWR allows the predictor variable to vary at different spatial scale, scale by um, using an adaptive bandwidth. Um, so for our analysis, this was the most fitting method um, to study high energy spending. I'm not going to dive into the technical details, but you can see the, the, the equation. Um, so our model uses weighted adaptive bias square kernel with an AICC as an optimization criterion. Um, and I'm going to turn to the results. So you can see the results here. Um, this is the batch bit um, for the data that we um, looking at the OLS adjusted R square, you see that it's 0.77, so that's already a good global estimate. But when we look at the local estimates produced by NGWR, you see that the R square is 0.88, which is a really good improvement. Um, and similarly, when you look at the global AICC, it's 272. Um, but when you look at the local AICC, you see an even improvement of 217. So, um, First, we look at the OLS estimators, and you can see that three of the variables have a negative association with extremely high energy um, spending, and two of them have a positive uh, association. So this is for the, the global, uh, global parameters. Um, but when you look at uh, the local parameters by looking at the mean table, or the mean column, sorry, then you can see that these relationships stay the same. So it's a, it's a good, um, news because the, the model, our model is working well. Um, and only in the case of employment, you see that the maximum value is different um, compared to the, the association in the OLS. Um, so employment percentage has a maximum um, value which is positive, while the OLS is negative, and we are going to explore that. Uh, um, so with you, looking at the adaptive bandwidth, we see that um, UK origin as a percentage of the neighborhood is a global parameter with uh, 262 observations, which is actually our number of observations. So it's a, it acts as a global parameter, while, um, for example, owner occupation and social anti tenure are more of a local um, parameters. So on the next two slides, I'm going to look at each uh, of the variables um, and look at the parameters. Um, I'm only looking at the uh, significant um, parameter estimates for each location by um, filtering out based on the significant t values. So um, on this slide, you can see the three negative association with um, high energy spending. Um, you can see on the left employment percentage, um, where only uh, the blue areas are significant. So it's very interesting actually because only the northern part or only in those locations in the northern part having a higher employment percentage in the neighborhood is negatively associated with energy spending. And in the city center, which is around here, um, it's not a significant variable and more it is in the south part, which is traditionally a poor, poorer area. So looking at the, uh, the middle map, you can see that uh, this is for the mean uh, energy performance certificate. Um, so in the dark areas, oh, sorry. Um, um, so in the dark area in the, in the city center, there's a, a more significant negative association um, of energy certificate, having a higher energy certificate with fuel poverty. But um, while this significant, this um, variable is still significant for the southern and eastern part of Bristol, not as much as in the city center. Um, on the right, you can see UK born population. Um, and the variation in this variable isn't as high as, for example, with the mean APC. Um, but you can see that this variable is, is more um, significant, like, and there's neg more of a negative association in the, uh, the southern parts compared to the, to the wealthier city center, which is located here. Um, so next, I'm going to look at um, the results for the two positive association, which is owner, occupi owner occupiers and social rented properties. And actually, you can see a very interesting pattern because um, owner occupiers um, in, uh, like, or, or owner occupation percentage in the neighborhood is more positively associated with high energy spending in the 
city center, while social rented properties um, located in the southern part of Bristol uh, are also very positively associated with high spending. And these are because um, there's an, a clear clustering of these two types of tenure in Bristol in built fabric. So I think this is a very interesting finding. And on the right, you can see the local R square um, for each um, neighborhood. Um, and you can see how it ranges from 0.77 to 0.93 um, based on how significant it is. So discussion and conclusions. Um, this question was whether there is a pattern of fuel poverty and, and to see whether this is unevenly distributed or not. And we can see that it is uh, there is a clear pattern. Um, and what's interesting to see is that both on occupation and social rented properties are positively associated with significant spending, which is somewhat um, in the middle of what we expected from the literature review, where people or um, many researchers find that it's it's just a, an architectural question um, and many people think of it more as a social question but actually owner owner occupiers also experience this significantly high energy spending obviously we don't ex assume that everyone who spends significantly more on energy um, than the average are necessarily materially deprived in any other way but I think it's a good um, idea to look at these as well because um, it's not what you would expect necessarily um, and also there are um, wider implications of fuel poverty and these high spending um, also it's, it's important since um, it can by addressing this problem um, you can reduce um, CO2 emissions, which is an environmentally important question. You can address um, social inequalities that you could see in the city and also um, energy dependency. So that could be a move away from traditional energy sources to more um, renewable, renewable energy sources. Um, so um, this is the prelim preliminary finding of an ongoing project, as I said. And we are planning on incorporating private rental to see where private rented properties are sitting on this scale and whether they are experiencing fuel poverty and on what scale and if there's a spatial pattern to that as well. Um, we are also planning on expanding um, the existing data set with the Zupal data on, um, on properties that are um, being sold and the land registry data as well. And um, on the long run, it we would also like to move away from this an aggregated LS soil analysis to more of a spine scale analysis and potentially even to look at other parts of England and not just um, Bristol as well. So thank you. And if you have any questions, I'm looking forward to hopefully answering them. Thank you, Rika. Uh, no questions in the audience chat just yet. Mm -hmm. uh, just, just on that comment that you made at the very end, uh, I asked this a lot to uh, to people about the extension of the the analysis that you've done to other cities within the UK, but then maybe to other cities uh, where fuel poverty may be a a seasonal thing that uh, yeah. winter and summer are more, more, more clearly defined. Uh, is that something that uh, matters even in the analysis, that type of uh, climate question, rather than maybe Bristol sometimes needing heating in the summer, depending on the, on the weather? Yes, I think we would like to expand that, for example, on Scotland as well, um, based on the weather. Um, and we've been talking about expanding it to other parts, but yes, there's a yeah, temporal um, part of this analysis. Um, and it's a very interesting question. So we have information on on spending and information on the heating type as well. So I think that could also be incorporated in the later parts, because that's also an important question. Oh, I can't, I can't hear you. There's an interesting uh, observation in the chat from Helen McKenzie, and just an interesting 
Is it a case that uh, landlords are not on putting in the necessary heating, insulation, or architectural uh, improvements to which means then that uh, renters are actually living in fuel poverty to no fault? Is, is that you have an opinion? Uh, yes. Um, so I think um, that that's why we are planning on incorporating this because I think this is very important and it's often hard to capture since uh, the data that we have do not necessarily um, include um, private rented properties but it is very very interesting and also I think because in for example in Bristol in the city center there are many university students who are renting this so I think it would be interesting to see whether they are experiencing the same problem or not um, so yeah I think we're definitely planning on um, looking into that as well Yeah, just a, another short question. You had uh, the distribution uh, maps for, from the GWR, and one of them was uh, the mean EPC certificate. Yeah. I was interested in the negative uh, association. But it, it was very strongly uh, negative towards the north, the north above, uh, you know, the city centre. Is there an explanation for that uh, through architecture or something, or ha have you have you looked into the reason for that? Um, yes, I've been looking at that, and I think one of the reasons that we chose Bristol is that there are quite a significant inequalities. Um, I just realized that um, the video is not on. so uh, so there are quite big inequalities. Um, so the, in the southern part, as I said, where there is a, a high proportion of social rented properties, um, income is, is significantly below the UK average. Um, and in the northern part, and especially the western west and northern parts where the city center is, um, it's quite significantly above the, the national average. So I think it's something due to the, uh, related to that. But yes, I think that was very interesting that even though there was a, a negative association with um, having a high energy um, certificate and being spending a lot of money on, on energy. Um, this was not as significant uh, in areas with um, poor, uh, poor areas with social renting. So, yes. Thank you. And I'll just give the audience another moment to, to give some questions. Uh, just to, to explain to myself and maybe other people who are not familiar, the Zoopla data set, what, what is that? And uh, what will it add to your research if, if you get your hands on it to use? So the Zupla data has information on properties are, that are sold on, on that post level. So we could um, expand our research uh, to maybe study the postcode area and not the LSOA level. And that it has a lot of information on the properties that are being sold. And we could potentially analyze uh, buyers and what because the EPC search doesn't have um, every type of information about the building, there's only the that are relevant to um, to energy. So, for example, the heating. But maybe if we know more information about um, the, the type of property that are sold, whether it's uh, what kind of houses they are, maybe we are going to know more about how this phenomenon affects these houses. So that's what we are planning to. Thank you. 